Here at Lawndale High School, I'm Lou Stowers, along with Rufus Washington and the terrific Channel 22 sports crew, including Rashawn Haylock and Brian Robert Taylor. And it is the uh, Lawndale Cardinals hosting the Torrance Tartars in a battle between the teams looking for their first win in the Pioneer League. And uh, Rufus, what a game it should be is uh, both teams coming off an injury plague couple of weeks. Well, both teams are, Lou, and in addition to that, hey, we get the fun of seeing the battle of the, of the bottom half of the league, the two teams with the no wins, as you said, but hey, somebody should come out of here tonight with a win to get their season turned. Lawndale has seven consecutive losses. Uh, Torres has three consecutive. Looks like Rashawn Haylock is ready, although we're about to have kickoff. Well, why don't we go to Rashawn anyway? Thanks a lot, guys. As you mentioned it, two wins between these two teams. Torres won six and one. Lawndale one and seven coming into this game tonight. This is definitely a winnable game for Lawndale tonight. We're talking to Coach Guilfoyle before the game. One thing this Cardinal team has to do is take care of the football. Four fumbles given away last week. Guys, as you know, that's been the story of the season for them. They have to shore those things up tonight. All right, thank you very much, Rashawn. The ball has been kicked off to the Cardinals, and the ball goes down around the 20 yard line and a flag goes up as it goes out of bounds. That's a penalty. So it will be first ball, a uh, first possession for the Lawndale Cardinals. And it appears that Kalen Henderson will lead him out. And he came back from a concussion. Brian Villa is back from a concussion as well. Although out tonight with a concussion for the Cardinals. Number 63, freshman Winston Brown. And also Brandon Lee, the junior offensive and defensive lineman. It'll be Kalen Henderson. There you see Dominic Flowers back in the game as well. Brian Villa in a tailback. Raymond Alvarado also in there for the Cardinals. First play, as you might expect, is a run. And that was Raymond Alvarado and nothing doing as it was first and 10 from the 35-yard line. And you're right, Lou, as you said, no surprise that it's a run play because that's what this Cardinal team features. They've got three running backs that have over 400 yards rushing on the season. When you combine all that, that's not bad to have 1,200 yards on the ground. Unfortunately, they aren't able to complement that very well with the passing game. It'll be second down and 10. Ball is handed off again. I believe that's to Alvarado again. This time over left tackle, and it should be about a five-yard gain up to about the 40-yard uh, line. So it'll be second down. Check that third down and five yards to go. And there you see the replay. Just a straight handoff to Alvarado. Kevin Ortega splits wide to the right on this third down play. Torrance. Losing three in a row, the Cardinals have lost seven in a row. Now we have a flag and probably a false start. As our officials tonight, the referee, Ken Smotries, offside on the defense. So that should be close to a first down for the Cardinals. So now it's third down and one for the Cardinals. And this, for their run offense with a nice push, should be fairly easy, but nothing's been coming fairly easy for anybody. Number eight, that's Chase Van Gerwen, is split to the near side. Well, suffice to say, the penalty certainly was a huge help for him. And you're right, the crowd, the pile, I should say, moves out beyond the first down sticks as it's out near the 50 at about the 47. But with that having been a third and six, they were in for their offense. Eh, a pretty tough situation. So. So an eight yard gain and a first down for Kalen Henderson and the Cardinals and they're on the move. 
Dylan Abel, the big man on campus for the Torrance Tartar defense, he has 141 tackles, is one of their linebackers. And now, number 75, Christopher Gonzalez, grabs a hold of the running back for the Cardinals, Raymond Alvarado. As he gets to midfield, a two yard gain, it'll be second down and a long eight. And again, as I was saying, when, when the when the rush game is is your feature, you've got to pick up significant yardage on first and second down. You don't want to end up in third and longs. Boy, that makes it a real uphill climb. So you've got to average about three and a half, maybe four yards on both of those downs to two in order to run that offense effectively. Man in motion, and now the handoff was to Villa on the misdirection on the wing formation, and that's a gain of about five yards. So it'll be a third down and about four situation for the Cardinals inside of Tartar territory. And yeah, we'll call it the 46 yard line. Five yards is right at Villa's average. He averages 5.5 .5 on the season, 80 carries with 447 yards gained coming into tonight's competition. Kevin Ortega splits wide to the far side, the right. Ismail Iragata is the center leading him out for the offense. And the ball is handed off up the middle, and there goes Watkins. Michael Watkins splits into the secondary and sprints into the end zone for a touchdown. Early on for Londale. It's six to nothing on the 46-yard run by Michael Watkins. So just like that again, well, you're talking about your rush game, doing what you needed to do. Michael Watkins certainly on that play, as you said, with the 46-yard TD run. That's a first down, then some. In fact, that's a pick six for him. 3.36 on the touchdown drive, and coming in to tack on the extra point is Brian Aguilar. Out of the hold of Brian Villa. A six-play drive. Sixty-five yards. And Aguilar's kick is a line drive right down the middle. And it's seven to nothing in favor of the Cardinals. So that's good news. Brian Aguilar there tacking on the extra points and he will kick off the ball to the Tartars, who probably will have Taylor Tyrone, one of their leading offensive weapons, as the kick returner, along with Sam Washington. And this is a running offense as well, Rufus. Now, and, well, and again, you saw the same thing I saw in the stats, boy. Certainly not a whole lot in the way of passing. Both teams, as you mentioned, Lou, featuring the run predominantly. Three men back deep for the Tartars. Kyle Matthews is in the middle, and it'll go to the man on the right. Actually, Kyle Matthews is on the right. In the middle is Taylor Tyrone, who was one of the heroes in last week's game, although it was a 35 to 33 loss at homecoming. And an offside on the kickoff, and that's certainly what you don't want is to hold up the game on the special teams. So now, we'll see if Aguilar can get, the, actually it's Raymond Alvarado doing the kickoff duties and he pooch kicks it. This will go to Matthews. Actually that's Taylor Tyrone. And he is caught at about the 35 yard line and a whole host of Red Jersey Cardinals push him back. So the ball will be started, uh, uh, spotted I should say, at the 36 yard line. And you mentioned how this Torrance team also is a rush team. They've rushed for 1,922 yards on the season. And of course the Lawndale Cardinals have rushed for 2,000 yards. Conversely, passing-wise, 
They've only attempted 58 passes, completed 20 for 312 yards on the season. Jason McGann is the quarterback, and there you see the double wing formation, and this is the pile gets pushed forward past the 40-yard line. About to the 42, or it'll be second down and about four. Jason Magana in at quarterback for Ralph Ramirez. And Taylor Tyrone had the ball. So he gets a six yard run. Tyrone, 362 yards on 46 carries and six touchdowns so far this year. Had 67 yards last year. The ball is pitched to Kwok Ho. Kwok Ho still going down about the 45 yard line, maybe the 40 yard line of the Cardinals. And it'll be first and 10. Kwok Ho doesn't get as many touches as does Washington and Taylor Tyrone, but he makes the most of them. Uh, he's got 138 on the season and he's averaging a little over five yards. Washington, whose name you'll hear quite a bit tonight, number four, no relation in case you're wondering. Um, 69 carries for 382. Also, um, Abel, who, who's their leading rusher with 97 carries. Taylor Tyrone is knocked out of bounds after a long gain by Kalen Henderson. Inside the 25 yard line, we'll call it the 22. So a nice run for Taylor Tyrone as he gets the wide pitch and some good blocking up front as well. A great block by Dylan Abel. Now we have a timeout to Lawndale. It's their first. And this game is gonna grind up this field. <laughs> So the ball is marked at the 23 yard line. First and 10 is Tyrone with a 21 yard gain. And at the way these teams are moving the ball and offering only defense here in the first five minutes of it we could have a scoring outburst tonight Lou. Torrance is 0-3 in the Pioneer League with a 1-6 and 1 record on top of the Pioneer League is South Torrance with a 3-0 record 7-1 overall North with a 3-0 record 6-2 overall and they're playing each other tonight for the lead in the Pioneer League South has won five in a row North has won four in a row. So here we go. Nagana leads him out back to pass. His first attempt looking for a man downfield has him open wow. and in the end zone for a touchdown for the Tardars. And that was Taylor Tyrone with a 23 yard touchdown reception. And it's a seven to six game. And you're right, Rufus. <laughs> Well, I'm half right and half wrong. We talked about the fact that they don't that they don't pass a whole lot. And of course, what's the first thing that they do? Magana takes it, drops back, passes to Taylor Tyrone on the coverage for them was Kalen Henderson, of course, who also doubles as a quarterback, and he just got beat on that one. So getting ready to tack it on, a left-footed kicker, Brian Davila, also a defensive back out of the hold of Magana, and that's up and good. So with 6.54 left in the first quarter, both teams score on their first possessions. So quite a surprise there, as I'm sure that uh, the Cardinals were expecting the run, but the timeout gave the Tardars and their coaching staff an opportunity to say, hey, why don't we try to sneak one in over them? And that's exactly what they did. And the thing about it, Lou, they only took a minute, 30 seconds to do it. Because it was at the 824 mark that Watkins broke off a 43-yard touchdown run. 
46, I believe. Touchdown, 46-yard touchdown run for Lawndale, and they were feeling pretty good about themselves. But, boy, that taste got knocked right out of their mouth in less than a minute. <laughs> well, a little over a minute. As I said, about a minute and a half. So that was a 64-yard drive. Four plays, a minute 30, like you said, and Magana, 23 yards to Tyrone, makes it seven all. Left-footed kick, and that's an onside kick try. And one of the big guys up front caught it, says, oh my goodness, I guess I better fall down real quick. That looked like Ramirez, I think. That was Martin Ramirez? Yep. Number 78, there you see him there on the screen. 6'2", sophomore, 260 pounds. One of the good offensive linemen here for Lawndale. So 6.54 left in the first quarter. Good field position for Lawndale right at their own 45-yard line. Henderson under center. Ball is handed off to Michael Watkins on the misdirection. And Michael getting a couple of yards as that play looked like it was a little slow to, to develop. Watkins. To the 46, excuse me Rufus, oh, no. so one yard gain by Watkins. Watkins listed at 5'5", 140. Ball is handed off to Alvarado straight up the middle this time and gets a across the 50 yard line and into Torrance territory at the 49 yard line where it'll be third and about four. And a wounded Cardinal down on the turf. And it looks like Mike Rodriguez, the 5'8", 190-pound sophomore guard. So a four-yard gain, five-yard gain, I should say, for Alvarado on that last play. And Mike comes off under his own power. So hopefully we'll see him back in. And they're not taking any chances with leg or head injuries that unfortunately has, has happened all too often here to the Cardinals this season. So Kalen Henderson on a big third down play with four yards to go has Eric Gray split to the near side and Raymond Alvarado with the carry needed to get to about the 45 yard line. He's close, but I don't think close enough at the 46. Now he's a full, a full yard short, and that brings up the first, co first coaching decision tonight for Coach Guilfoy, whether to punt it away or go for it. Some good inside tackling by the Tartar defense you saw there in the replay. Bringing the play in, number 15, Brandon Martins, one of the right receivers. It'll be Eric Gray. Splitting out to the near side. Another receiver split out to the far side. Man in motion is Watkins, but as soon as he goes in motion, a flag on the play that's usually out by the back judge there. Doesn't he usually keep the time? Yep. So Martins will come back in, and let's see if they rethink their fourth down play here. Now back inside. Cardinal territory at the 49. So it'll be fourth down and six. Fourth and six, and of course, what a difference. Again, that penalty makes a penalty earlier in the quarter in what was a third and six, made a third and one. They, they managed to get that one, but now this is a fourth down play. A little bit different scenario, but everything indicates that they're gonna go for it. Great to the far side, Bonuelos to the near side, Watkins Gets the ball as he was the man in motion. Has a blocker up front, gets the first down. A nice sweep, terrific blocking up front led by David Samayoa. And it's a first down for Lawndale. And that looked like the old student body right play, Louis. 
Nothing fancy. Nothing fancy, just gave it to Watkins. Hey, come this way, follow me. Had a, had a, a convoy in front of him and picks up the first down. After this play, Brian Robert Thomas, Brian Robert Thomas Taylor has an update. Alvarado gets the handoff right up the middle down to the 40 yard line. Let's go down to Brian Taylor. So again, no problem. So again, Lou, here's what Londell has in front of him. Second and long, he only picked up a yard on that play. And in motion is Flowers. Handoff, nope, Henderson keeps it. And he gets hit just as he hits the line by Dario Lozano. And now we got a late flag coming in low. This is gonna be, my guess is, a sportsmanship foul. The fish aid and crew getting together to give it to the referee. Good news, Mike Rodriguez back in the huddle. Coming back out is George Teamer. So now a big penalty against the Tartars. Did you see the call, Rufus? It was a personal foul penalty. Looked like there was some extra action in the huddle. I mean, I saw when, when, when the uh, official threw it, 15 yards, puts Londale in great field position. Down. Should be near, near the, the 25. 20. Is that where the ball is? Inside the 25? Inside the 25 it is. Back to pass as Henderson has a man open downfield. That's Van Gerwen. He catches it going away in the corner. A beautiful catch. Touchdown Cardinals. 13 to seven on a pretty pass. We'll call it 22 yards from Henderson to Van Gerwen. Rufus, what do you see in the replay? Well, in the replay, here's what you're gonna see him drop back and he just lays it up there. His receiver has plenty of time to get under it. Almost laid it up too long. And once again, the defensive back, number 12 for the, for the Totters, didn't really play that correctly. That was Kyle Matthews, because he clearly had a play on the ball that he let get away from. Aguilar has his kick blocks and that keeps the score 13 to seven with 342 left to go in the uh, first quarter. And Rufus, turnabout's fair play for the Cardinals. It absolutely is. And what we went to, here, here, here we've come to a game that we talked about being between the two teams that, at the bottom of the, of the uh, Pioneer League with only two wins between them. And here we've had a 20 point scoring outburst in the first quarter alone, and there's still 342 left. Six play drive, and uh, that was a 55 yard, a 65 yard drive. Six plays, let's go to Rashawn. Yeah, thanks a lot guys. You know, I talked to Coach Gilthor before the game, and I said, who's one guy that has to play well for you guys to win tonight? Kalen Henderson. Henderson, of course, missed the game last week with a concussion. Known maybe for his running prowess, that arm looked pretty good on that last play, guys. Sure did, Henderson. And then a better catch, had a nice throw, a better catch by Van Gerwen. Had to catch that going away with his back, going, falling on his back and leaping up to make the catch. As we had the kickoff and a penalty flag. I believe it went out of bounds. So let's see if they're going to kick this one over. The teams are sure acting like it. Yeah, the Tartars are lining up in their kickoff return formation. So they're really gonna get a, an advantage here as their man, Kyle Matthews, is back at about the 15-yard line. I guess they didn't have time to paint the numbers on the uh, 
east side of the field. <laughs> the numbers are painted here on the west side. Right. Kind of like you and me running late all day. Yeah. <laughs> and this kickoff. And is that another flag as Raymond Alvarado made the kick? But let's see what this whistle is. Only thing I can think of, Rufus, is an offside. Well, you know, I don't see any flags on the field, but the official definitely killed the play, and it is offside, though, as you said, called by, uh, called by the back judge. Second time by the Cardinals tonight that they've been offside on a kickoff. take five yards back. Right. So Raymond kicks a knuckleball and is picked up by Taylor Tyrone and he is pushed way back. Michael Watkins underneath the bottom of the pile. There's Rodriguez. And what do we call, we're gonna call that about the 45 they're gonna say. Right right at the 45-yard line is where they're going to mark it a little. So a short field for the Tartars. As now, as, as kind of a mirror image as the Cardinals started off with an onside kick recovery at their 45. And, of course, the two five-yard offside penalties against the Cardinals is what gave this excellent field position to the Torrance Tartars. Keeping the ball is Magana, or did he keep the ball? Did he hand that off? No, that was handed off to number 15, Tyrone. Tyrone. Mm -hmm. And he got to the 50 yard line, so it'll be second down and five. Tartars in their double wing formation. The ball is pitched back to Tyrone, gets hit at the line of scrimmage, but somehow squirts his way through down to about the 46 yard line of Lawndale. So it'll be third down and about one. It yep, looks like they're going to mark him just about a yard short on the play as we see the replay coming in. The pitch back to Tyrone. Boy, after the initial contact, he still picks up another four yards on the plate as he was hit right at midfield before being brought down at the 46 yard line. Tightly knit double wing formation. Tyrone is a man in motion and Carlos Banuelos might be called for an offside or did they catch somebody on the offensive line moving? Well the Cardinals certainly think they were drawn off but We'll have to see if the officials agree with them. Well, they're having a good long discussion about it. Normally, that's a bang bang play, Lou, meaning that you saw exactly what happened, but. Maybe we, <laughs> what if we have a replay of that, because it was on this near side just before the ball was snapped. Offside wow. on the Cardinals. So, Bonuelos was in the neutral zone. There you see him right there moving, just about ready to get off his out yeah. of his stance. No, there, no, right there, there it was. He he was right though. The, the offensive line of. Okay, well we're working together. Oh, in there. Magana. Now that was the first down, by the way, after that penalty. Ball is pitched back to Tyrone. The de blocking develops, and a nice shoestring trip up by Deron Frost. But still another nice gain for Taylor Tyrone. And you're right, Deron Fro De Frost with a nice shoestring tackle there. You see him number one. About the 33, 34 yard line, we'll call it. So a 
seven yard gain for Tyrone. Tightly knit. Kwok Ho gets the ball and is tackled immediately. Nice play by Adonis Johnson. Good open field tackle by Adonis Johnson. What he did was he wrapped him up, man. He had an eye on him all the way. Didn't do anything fancy, just did straight fundamentals. Got in there. You'll see on the replay here. There he comes across. Bam. Gets his arms around the waist, drags him down. So a big third down play. Third down at about four. We'll call it a long five for the Tardar offense and the Lawndale defense. Man in motion is Tyrone, but the ball is given back to Quack Ho, and he is off to the races. Down towards the 10. And he did he step out of bounds? Yep. At about the 15-yard line, maybe, inside the 15-yard line. We'll call it the 14. But that was Kwok Ho. A nice misdirection handoff here. And what it does is not only moves the chain, but it puts him down inside the red zone. <laughs> and Surprise for all surprises, we are still in the first quarter, fans. 27 seconds left, and Torrance, the Totters, if you're a fan of this, knocking on the door for their second score. We've had three scores already here in the first 12 minutes. Tightly bunched double wing formation. Ho gets the handoff, runs around the end, and gets hit right around the five yard line, maybe inside the five yard line. Kalen Henderson is the man up on top, up, off of the pile there, and that's down to the five yard line. And Ho with a nine yard run. And the first quarter comes to an end. And with that, let's go down to Brian Taylor. Thanks guys. Interesting aspect of tonight's game. They called it today in the Daily Breeze, the Battle of the Wing Tees, okay? Single wing tee for Lawndale, double wing tee for Torrance. These are kind of antiquated, not really antiquated, but older or old school offenses that are run by both these teams. You see it rarely at the high school level, very rarely at the college level, and almost, well, it's non-existent at the pro level. So that, that's an interesting aspect of the game. Talk to Coach Hollis at Torrance uh, right before the game. Heartbreaking loss last week, 35 to 33 against Centennial. I said, Coach, what's got to change. He says it was uh, a matter of turnovers and we had some fumbles. We missed some extra points. We're hoping to turn it around this week. All right, let's take a quick timeout and come back with the second corner on Channel 22. Second quarter about ready to get underway as the center. Number 76 for the Tartars and don't have him on my roster. And neither do I, so he's a mystery man. Ball is handed off to Taylor Tyrone, is hit right at the line of scrimmage, maybe lost to yard Rufus. Good defensive push by Kalen Henderson and friends on the Lawndale defense, and it gets just back to the line of scrimmage, no gain. Third and one, less than one. You see the good defensive push. And south and south. Torrance is actually able to pick up. They're in a position where they can pick up a first down, even though they're inside the five yard line. They're only a yard from a first down. Of course, they're only three yards from a touchdown. Man in motion is Tyrone. He gets the pitch, forced back inside, and nicely done by the defense. Again, a good tackle made there by Ishmael. He had got a Izzy on the spot. And now a decision for Coach Rock Hollis because it's fourth, fourth and one for the first down. Of course, they're thinking touchdown here. I wouldn't imagine, Lou, from the inside the five that they're going to make a field goal attempt, but. Well, here comes their kicker, Brian Davila. But he's also a defensive back. Maybe he's going to do a sneak to get the first down. And again, 
<laughs> Offside on the right side of the line is Carlos Banuelos, and that'll give him the first down. If indeed it is offside. So that'll be first and goal for the Tartars. Half the distance of the goal. This will go right to the three yard line, Rufus. Oh, so, again, you know, we talk about it all the time penalties being a difference maker. And there they had them exactly where they wanted them, Lou, on, uh, on, on fourth and goal. But the penalty gives new life because it gives a new set of downs. And the signal coming from the side is that that's a touchdown for Taylor Tyrone. With 10-12 left to go in the first half, it's all tied up at 13. So Byron Davila coming on to tack on the extra point, and this one was just right up the middle. Taylor Tyrone waiting for his blocking to develop. Well, that penalty made a tough situation a little bit tougher for the Londale Cardinal defense as there was no margin for error at least initially with it being a fourth and about three. They had a little breathing room and they could do some different things here. They were only bunched up and Taylor Tyrone simply took advantage of the opportunity to score. So a three yard run, caps off a 55 yard touchdown drive and this one is high and through for the extra points. 10-12 left to go in the first half. 14 to 13 in favor of the Tartars. And that one took about five minutes, just a little under five minutes to complete. Fifty-five yards. Nine plays. Courtesy of the short field with the two offside penalties on the kickoff against the Cardinal. Kevin Ortega will be the man on the far side, Michael Watkins on the near side, getting ready to receive the, uh, the kickoff from Byron Davila. Second to the last game already. Seemed like the season just started. And this one is kicked and it'll go out of bounds. Now, now there's a flag on the play. I, I, actually, I thought that that ball actually touched one of the Cardinal players. And if it in fact did, but the officials apparently don't see it that way, because if, if it had in fact touched one of them, it would have been spotted where it went out of bounds at. Let's see, here's the kick. Here's the replay. Boy, hard to tell from there, but it certainly looked at when I looked at it with the natural eye the first time. But hey, Cardinals catch a break. They get the ball at their own 35 yard line. Because on the kick out of bounds, there is no re kick anymore. The penalty is to put the ball at the 35. Flowers, the man in motion. The ball is handed off straight up the middle. And Brian Villa is the ball carrier. Getting up off the bottom of the pile, number 79, Dario Lozano. So it'll be about a three yard gain up to the 38 yard line. Second down and seven. Ball is handed off to Villa again, and he gets hit and still carries the pile. This is going to be close to the first down marker. It's going to be about third and one. About the 44-yard line. So it'll be third down and one. the 
with a six yard gain by Brian Villa. 8.50, clock counting in the second quarter. And Kalen Henderson, with the surge from his offensive line, gets in to Torrance, close to Torrance territory, but good enough for a Cardinal first down at the 48 yard line. And there you see the good push there. Good help, David Samayoa, really open in the big hole. Kevin Ortega, splitting wide to the near side. After the four yard gain, so first down. Pass by Henderson, he rolls out to the left, look out, and he is taken down by the shirt sleeve by Tyler Vaona. But still a gain on the play, Rufus. A gain on the play, able to avoid the sack. Lewin actually picked up about two yards on it as they're out near midfield now. Just inside on the Cardinals side of the 50 yard line. So it'll be a long nine yards, long eight yards on second down for the Cardinals here on the near hash mark. The ball is handed off to Villa. Villa is headlocked by Dylan Abel, but not before about a five yard gain. So that gets into Torrance territory at the 46 yard line after a four yard gain. Dylan Abel, one of the captains on this team. We talked about him earlier. He's a senior, six foot, 190 pounds. As are a lot of guys at this level, a two way player. Third and four, balls handed off to Villa and that blocking scheme was wrecked in a hurry. And you can credit Tyler Vaona on that one as he went straight up with David Samayoa. Okay, so Lou, what do you think here? Third well. and four, you've seen what happens now? They've gone for it twice, got it twice. Okay, um, but this is a fourth down play, fourth, fourth, and quite a distance. I think this is one of those that Coach Gilfall decides, "Hey, I, I better think about this a little bit longer." Yeah. <laughs> and he calls a timeout, tells the line judge over here, Jason Skinner, better take a timeout. And I see that the white hat, and I thought that was old Ken Smotrys, the white hat out there tonight. Ken Smotrys, the umpire, is Phil Jinks. Nate Sterling is the linesman, the line judge, Jason Skinner. And Stephen O. Smotrys is the back judge. And Ken wouldn't admit to any relation. <laughs> to many chuckles. Yeah. But 13, 14 to 13 in favor of the Tartars. And let's see what the Cardinals have. Looks like they're coming out and going for it. But then Henderson comes back. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking, Lou, your better choice. I know you got a lot of confidence in your running game. But give yourself an opportunity here, you know. For my money, I kick it away, make, make it a field position game. It's only a one-point game. You fail to convert here. You're giving a team with a potent running attack a very short field to work with. Give is to Michael Watkins, and did he get it? It he looks did. like he just got it on that second and third effort down to the 41-yard line, Rufus. And that's where they're gonna mark the ball. Any flags down? No flags. The littlest guy on the field comes up with the biggest play of the night so far for the Lawndale Cardinal as he picks up the first down, moves it down to the 40 yard line. So first and 10 on Michael Watkins' seven yard run. So a very confident 
Cardinal team, and maybe that's what they need to boost them up and fly over the Tartars and take the lead going into halftime. The ball is handed off straight forward to Villa. He gets past the 40-yard line, down to about the 37. Villa Swallow guy himself, he's a senior, listed at 5'9", 165. As I mentioned on the season though, one of those three 400 yard rushers that they've got. Banuelo split out to the far side. Watkins goes in motion, but Ken uh, Kalen Kennedy keeps the ball and Kennedy with a big run inside the 20 yard line. Inside the 15, Rufus, for a first down. Don't see any flags. First down signaled by the referee. Kalen Henderson with a huge run. And they marked that the 22. And so that's a 15-yard run, Rufus. And he's one-third of that three-headed uh, monster I was telling you about that, that has the three-headed Russian monster for them that has 1,200 total yards. Got 2,000 as a team. Henderson with 400 himself on the season coming into tonight. Watkins in motion. Henderson keeps it again, calls his own number, breaks a tackle, but then gets whacked as he reaches the 10 yard line. And boy, that's near another first down. If he's just inside the 11, and they're not going to measure it, that's going to be a second down. Actually, that's. Uh, Looks like a first down, that's at the 10 yard line. Okay, so the house announcers gave us a bum steer, if you will. And a 12 yard gain. Well, actually we're gonna call it an 11 yard gain down to the 11. But nonetheless, still a first down. It's not first and goal, it's first and 10 as the ball goes up the middle Makes and never mind. into the end zone. Down. Touchdown for Londale. Kalen Henderson Kalen. going back with the keeper. So he did all the work on that drive himself. He just followed the big blocking, especially Izzy Igadera. Igareta, excuse me. Izzy Igarena with the big block to release Kalen Henderson. And now it's 19 to 14, and they're going to go for two, Rufus. Watkins is not going to get there. As he was tackled by Taylor Tyrone, and that keeps the score 19 to 14 with 439 left to go in the first half. Right thing to do to go for the two. Unfortunately, they aren't able to convert. And what that does is, boy, that, that makes it a less than one possession game. Let's go to Rashawn before the kickoff. Yeah, thanks a lot, guys. You know, I was talking to Coach Guilfoyle before the game. This Lawndale team is absolutely confident coming into here tonight. Last season, they beat Torrance. It was the first time beating any of the Torrance schools since the school reopened. So, of course, there's a lot of confidence, and you can tell it on the field. And, of course, those of you that are home watching tonight, you feel just like me and my partners feel. This is definitely a winnable game. Of course, Lawndale cannot hurt themselves, and also youth is no longer an excuse. Coach Gilfell says, you talk about youth, you have to throw that out of the window. Eight games into the season, it's time for these guys to grow up and be men. All right, thanks, Rashawn. Two-point conversion, no good, makes it 19 to 14. And getting ready to kick the ball off this time. Wow. Raymond Alvarado, and again, this is an onside kick, but this is by the Cardinals. And it looks like Torrance oh. picks it up. Torrance recovered, boy, everything went right, almost perfectly executed. Londell had to wait. The Londell special teams player over on the far side of the field was in perfect position, but he knew what he had to do. He had to wait for the ball to travel the 10 yards, and as a consequence of doing that, Torrance able to recover. And that's right at the 49-yard line, so another short field for the Tartars. 
And that follows the 65 play 10 yard drive. It took about five minutes and 25 seconds. Completed by Henderson's 11 yard run to make it 19 to 14. And this one may be a gain of a yard on the handoff going to the right side. Ho again. There you see the little guy. Nice block thrown there, but Raymond Alvarado there on the tackle. So a one yard gain. At the 50-yard line, it'll be second down and nine with 4.04 4 minutes left to go in the first half. Pitch to Tyrone, waiting for his blocking to develop, and now springs free. Has one man to catch him, and Henderson isn't going to even try. A 50-yard touchdown run by Taylor Tyrone, and that gives the Tartars the lead at 20 to 19. Wow, talk about a quick scoring play, quick scoring drive. One minute. Magano, all he's got to do is turn and pitch it. Nice blocking up front. And there he goes. 50 yards into the end zone. So that's Tyrone's second touchdown, actually third touchdown on the night. A 23 yard pass reception. He had the three yard run. That was in the first quarter, three yard run in the second quarter. And now a 50 yard run. Kick is up by Davila and through with 3.41 left to go in the first half, 21 to 19 in favor of the Tartars. Tyrone came into tonight's contest, Lou, with uh, 362 yards on the season, averaging seven and a half a carry. Well, he's already pushed himself over the 400 mark, and the way they're going tonight, he may push himself over the 500 yard mark on the season. That took all of a minute, 15 seconds. Three plays covering 51 yards. So an impressive run by an impressive young man. Also has 67 tackles coming in and three interceptions. Is one for one in passing and has even thrown two touchdown passes has caught two touchdown passes coming into tonight's action. So he is Mr. Big Man on campus. He and uh, Dylan Abel. And I haven't had a chance to call Dylan Abel's name much tonight on offense, and he's their lead in Russia with 600 yards on the season coming into tonight's game. On the near side, Michael Watkins, Kevin Ortega, on the far side, Brian Villa is the up man and has a little room and Brian Villa gets up to the 45 yard line, so a short field as the drum corps of the Cardinals gets things going. Well, kind of like they do in basketball, here we see on the replay, boy, Villa hit, had a crease, couldn't quite get to it. Good special teams play, the reason he couldn't Good special teams play by uh, the Torrance Tigers. So Henderson leading the offense, hands it off straight ahead to Raymond Alvarado. Just keeps his feet moving. Actually, that's Michael Watkins. Gets up to the 50 yard line for, I'm going to call that a uh, four yard gain. It'll be second down and six for the Cardinals. Still have three minutes to get the lead back. Man in motion is Flowers. He'll get the ball and is wrapped up. This is going to be a loss, Rufus. Back to about the 47-yard line. Lost and making a nice play on that one. Russell Hoffman. Well, the Torrance defense read that one perfectly. And you're right, they, they, they drop him for a loss on the play. Going to make it a third and long. Third and about eight, maybe nine. 
Big play here with two and a half left to go. Clock running. Henderson sets the line. He'll keep it himself. That's been a pretty good play. But hanging on for dear life onto his ankle was one of the Tartars. Okay, so now you've got that fourth down decision again, Lou. With two minutes left here, looks like you're going to get another timeout call. Wow. The Tartars are taking it this time. That's going to aid the Lawndale effort because they get a chance to think, of, think about it without burning their timeout. Their final timeout, yeah. Yet again, in, in this case, you got 207 left here in the first half. You're only down by a pair. Again, you've got a fourth and five situation. If, in fact, you, you're not successful, let's just play it all the way out. You're going to give them excellent field position. Eddie Roca is the, was the man making the tackle that kept Henderson from getting free. And here's what Torrance has shown us. They can score in a hurry, okay? The Cardinals like to take their time. Like they just had, they just had a 10 play drive for their third touchdown. And Taylor Tyrone and the Tartars, like you say, their last drive was a three play drive. And again, Coach Gilfall showing extreme confidence in his team. Watkins, the man in motion, they give it to Raymond Alvarado and they need to get to the 45 yard line and it there. doesn't look like they made it. Get, get there. And so now we'll see what the consequence, if any, of that decision is because we've got 201 left in the first half. Torrance lead by a score 21-19. As you see on the replay there, great effort by the Cardinal. However, that effort was stopped just short. So a timeout called again, Rufus. This time out was taken by Lawndale. So of course, now they want to set their defense. Excuse me, Lewis. You know, I mean, clearly, clearly, you want to contain them here. You know, you're down by a deuce. That's not bad. You're in the ball game. Boy, not only it, 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 the, the fact that it would extend the lead if they scored isn't what's important. What it would do to, to, to your team's psyche is what's more important. And quite frankly, I think that that's their challenge, and that's what Coach Guilfoy and the rest of the coaching staff for Lawndale Cardinals is keenly aware of. Well, the Cardinal defense definitely needs a stop. And maybe even a turnover to get the ball back, or to get the lead back. Well, now you're asking for a whole lot. Hey, I okay. always do, you know that. There hasn't been a punt yet. And now the play on the other side as the ball was run by Callister. And that gets into Cardinal territory. Watch a replay here. Actually a little pass out in the flat. There to make the stop, Dayron Frost. So it'll be second down and five, a little pass play. So putting that little bug into the head of the Cardinal defense and this one out of the shotgun, Wildcat to Tyrone. He's got a first down and a lot more. This one yeah. could be six points. He trots into the end zone for the touchdown with 142 left to go in the first half. And Lou. And Kalen Henderson is looking over to the bench like what happened? Well, they just scored six points. That's what happened. They, they scored six. Well, we did. We're going to ask you to run that replay one more time after we see it this time. That's a touchdown run by Taylor Tyrone. Boy. Well, you know, sometimes you gamble and win. Other times you gamble and lose. Okay. That time, the Lawndale Cardinals gambled and lost badly. 
52 yard run by Tyrone. That's his fourth touchdown tonight. And the kick is good with 140 left to go. And that makes it 28 to 19 in favor of Torrance. Here you go. Okay. Ball directly handed a snap back to Taylor Tyrone. And he faked the handoff. Try the Wildcat formation. Direct snap to Taylor Tyrone. As you said, fake of the handoff. Every, we all saw it. The fans at home getting a chance to see it again. 52 yard touchdown run. And let's see, he did a 52 yard dash in that, 41 seconds. That's what it was. Well, actually, 21 seconds because they, cause they 21, took possession right. at 201. You're right. So 28 to 19. Two straight touchdowns by Tyrone. And Davila getting ready to kick things off. Ortega on the far side, Watkins on the near side. And Watkins is gonna take it at about his own 10. Picks it back up, and here he comes, waiting for some friends that didn't show up. And it'll be first and 10 for the Cardinals. At about the 24 yard line, but now we have some tempers flaring and flags flying, and let's see what happens once they untangle everything. There you see referee Ken Smotries. Personal foul against Torrance again. That's their second personal foul of the game, and that's a big 15 yard penalty. And now now more. It's going to go right back. <laughs> okay. So a couple of guys woofing at each other inside the pile there. And it'll start at the 24-yard line. Okay. Now we got all that settled. Lawndale first and 10, Bonuelo split to the near side. Gray to the far side, back to passes Henderson, looks for Gray, going downfield and is double covered. The ball is knocked away and almost intercepted by Kyle Matthews. So that time Lawndale thought they'd catch him sleeping. They go for the long, try to hit on the long pass play, comes up incomplete and you're right. They're fortunate it wasn't intercepted. Henderson just trying to heave it and hope that the gray ran under it. He was there, but so were two defenders. So didn't fool the Tartars at all with 125 left in the first half. And Mr. Gray likes for you to know, Lou, that that's little Eric. That's Eric Gray Jr. Eric Gray, as he told me two weeks ago, is up here in the stands. Eric that's Gray right. Jr. is down there on the field. Henderson keeping the ball, finds a nice hole, gets a wow. first down. And it'll be first and 10 for the Cardinals. So Henderson has been the big running surprise here. Comes up, looks like he may have gotten a bit of a stinger on his hip there. Says I'm okay though, yeah, you see him laying hard on his hip. He'll shake that off though. 113 clock running left here in. But it's been a wide scoring first half. 47 points on the board already. And Londale looking for more. Henderson faked the pass, went back into the pocket, but then was tackled for his efforts by Christopher Gonzalez, the six foot, 227 pound sophomore, and gets back to the line of scrimmage. Clock continues to run and of course, nothing, if I'm reading the clock right, the scoreboard right, there are no timeouts left for Lawndale. About 20 seconds left to go. Watkins in motion, but the ball is handed off to Villa, gets a nice block, but still can't turn the corner as far as 
as he wanted to. Gets to about the 43 yard line, so it'll be a third down play. Under five yards for the Cardinals. Now this may be, now that was the last play of the ball game, Rufus. So a four yard gain by Brian Villa ends things up. Just so we don't lose our 100 fans that we got that are sitting together. See, some folks think I was saying we only got 100. The 100 that are sitting together at home right now watching, that's the last play of the half. There's did, plenty of football Did I say the game? I'm you sorry. Said the game? I'm sorry. Huh? But I just I don't want folks half. to leave. No, no. You, they take you at your word, Lou. If you say that's the game, they're going to back up and leave. That's right. My All apologies. Right? My apologies. And let's see, does anybody have any words? Nope, doesn't look like it. Brian Robert Taylor is, I uh, think he's at the hot dog stand. And uh, Rashawn Haylock is... At the soda stand. Now he's, <laughs> he's off in Wonderland, I think. <laughs> and we will take a break. And just, just to tell you something about uh, Taylor Tyrone's night, the last three times he ran the ball, three yards, 50 yards, and 52 yards, all for touchdowns. Wow. So... We will have the unofficial stats when we come back and the third quarter action coming up on Channel 22. Just before the third quarter, we'll uh, go over the stats. And uh, right now, Torrance, who is in the lead, 28 to 19 over Lawndale. And the rushing department, Kwok Ho, has 46 yards on four carries. And for the leader of the pack, number 15, Taylor Tyrone, he has 10 carries for 143 yards and three touchdowns on the receiving end, one catch for 23 yards and a touchdown. So total offense by Taylor Tyrone so far, 166 yards and four touchdowns. And the quarterback tonight, Jason Magana, in for Ralph Ramirez, is two out of three for 28 yards and a touchdown. For the Cardinals, Seven carries and 24 yards for Brian Villa. Nine carries and 68 yards and a touchdown for uh, Kalen Henderson. And Henderson played big on a drive when he scored his lone touchdown. Seven carries and 21 yards for number 21, Raymond Alvarado. Only five carries but 65 yards and a touchdown for Michael Watkins. And for Henderson in the air, one for two, 22 yards and a touchdown. And that was to Brian Villa. Or check that. That was to Chase Vanderwin. Right. So there you have it. And a high scoring first half as Watkins got things going with a 46 yard touchdown run. Magana to Tyrone for 23 yards, tied it. And then Henderson, 22 yards to Vanderwin. Then it was Tyrone with his hat trick. And in between there, Henderson had his 11 yard run, but the big play at 20, uh, 21 to 19, the uh, Cardinals turned it over on downs when they went for it on fourth and four. Or maybe it was fourth and six when they went for it. it fourth and six, four was as we talked about it, as that play unfolded, is that it was gonna put them in a tough position if they didn't convert and Torrance came back and scored, they'd go in the locker room with their heads down. I'm sure that's what happened. Coach Gilfors tried to pick him up. But guess what? Guess what? Then you come out of the locker room and you got to give it right back to him. Taylor Tyrone picks the ball up on the kickoff at about the four yard line. Maybe gets up to about the seven. So this will be the longest or the farthest back that the uh, either team has either started from, Rufus. Let's go to Rashawn. Hey, th thanks a lot, guys. Talked to Coach Gilfield coming out of the locker room at halftime. He said offensively, they're getting exactly what they want. They're getting everything they want offensively. Can't ask for much more on that side of the ball. On the defensive side, however, that's a whole nother story. His team is not being aggressive enough, and this Torrance team is just taking it right to these Cardinals. Gilfoyle said it's something he harped on all week about being tough and being aggressive. Hopefully, his guys answer the call here in the second half. Ball is pitched back to the halfback and uh, the ball was placed at the nine yard line. So it'll be second down. Good defense by the Cardinals after Taylor Tyrone took the handoff. Ball was pitched back to him, there you see it on the replay. 
Short gain on the play for Tyrone. Makes it a second and long. They give him about three, it looks like. So they can call it a second and seven. Ball is at the 12. That'll be second down. And it looked like there was a lot of movement there early on as Magana just stood there as both lines started popping at each other, Rufus. And with that, let's go down to onto the field of Brian Robert Taylor. Thanks, guys. Listen, uh, had a chance to talk to uh, the coaches from Torrance, uh, part of the, all the assistant coaching staff. Uh, and uh, you know what? They were pretty happy with the way things went that uh, second quarter. Uh, they're saying we got to stay strong, just stick to the uh, game plan the way it is. They're really happy with the way things are going now. They just say, let's just keep up the good work. And that was pretty much the message they gave to the guys on the team uh, during halftime. All right, thank you, Brian. And it was an illegal procedure, false start. So it'll be second down at about 13 yards to go and a nice push on the left side as Brian Villa, along with Mike Rodriguez, make the tackle on Taylor Tyrone. And he gets up to about just across the 15-yard line, but it'll be third down for the Tartars after about an eight-yard gain. Well, that was a big play by Villa and Rodriguez. Rodriguez doing the heavy lifting, so to speak, on that play. But boy, uh, he had a head of steam going, talking about Taylor Tyrone on that one. That could, that could have been disastrous. Tyrone, the tailback, and he gets the pitch again going around the right side. Still on his feet, actually, the ball goes to another back and is pushed out of bounds at about the 36-yard line. And that, that was, was number, that was Dylan Abel. We got our first peek at him. Exactly, and, and you heard me say earlier, boy, gosh, where's Dylan Abel? You know, be careful what lead, you wish for. He's your lead rusher on the season. Well, you see the replay there. He had a whole lot of guys follow him. And in fact, nobody actually tackled him. He, he ended up with some contact, lost, lost his uh, footing, and stepped out of bounds. 21 yards and a first down for Dylan Abel. Well, maybe he was kept out of the action for some disciplinary reasons. Man in motion, Magano, and the ball was dropped because now one of the linemen has it. And he maybe loses a yard as number 54 had it. And he is not on our list. And so it'll be a loss of one. Usually means when he's not on the list, Lou, that he's a junior varsity player who they brought up. Now, for all I know, the guy could be a senior. But generally speaking, guys who, who, who don't, who don't make the max prep provided uh, roster and normally junior varsity players that dress out for the varsity game. 9.05 left to go in the third quarter. Man in motion is Taylor Tyrone who gets the pitch back. And a good job by the Cardinals to keep him inside of the uh, first down marker. Keep so him the inside ball. the playing field, quite there frankly. You know. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Because they haven't had a lot of success with, 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 with that element of the game tonight, at least as it relates to uh, Taylor Tyrone. Six yards on the play. And it's a third down. Well, they give him a four yard push. That well, was six six yards because they were uh, they had a yard or two loss on the play, so it's Third down and six. On the double wing formation, and now they're going to call too much time as the back judge, Stephen O. Smotries, threw the flag and resets his watch. So they're going to go back five, back two, where it'll be third down and 11. Back to the 39-yard line. So Rock Hollis, the longtime head coach of these Torrance High Tartars, can't like that too much. Can't like that, but I gotta tell you, the Lawndale Cardinals certainly like it. So let's see if the Cardinals can take advantage of it. 
Tyrone gets the pitch, but then Abel gets the other handoff on the misdirection, and look out, it looks like it's good enough for a first down. Boy, I mean, they went to the bag of tricks on that one, and the Cardinal defense bit hook, line, and sinker. And that gets to the 48-yard line. That's good enough for a Tartar first down. So first and 11, or third and 11, has turned into a first and 10. Via got up out of that scrum, showed a little bit of frustration. The official took, looked over and took a peek at him. And the reason I point that out to you fans is that when the official sees a player does something, guess who's the next person he's looking directly at? That player that he just thought Via threw a bit of an elbow out of frustration. Ball's Another on fumble. the ground again. Magana throws it downfield and wide open is Taylor Tyrone at about the 20 yard line. Finally, Kalen Henderson caught up with him to tackle him inside the 20 near the 15 and a big gain by Magana to Tyrone again. Down to the 15 yard line, Rufus. As you see on the replay here, Magana dropping back, rolls right, gets a good look, finds a wide open. Kalen Henderson, the safety, beaten badly on the play. Big game, they're now down in the red zone. So a 34 yard gain, good enough for a Tartar first down. And so a busted play turns into a long play. First down, Taylor Tyrone picking his way and good tackling by the Cardinal defense, but not after a gain of about two or three. Kalen Henderson there coming up off the bottom of the pile a little slow is Izzy Igareda. There you see the play. Got to tell you, Taylor Tyrone has been very impressive tonight, fans, in his performance here. That's his 14th carry, Rufus. So Tyrone is a slot man on the far side. Now he goes in motion. Pass, and just out of the hands of Dylan Abel. And he was pretty much wide open, but not enough air on there. Now we got a flag coming in. Personal foul, roughing the passer. It's gonna be called against Lawndale. Boy, that's gonna be a half a distance to the goal. Automatic first down. So that'll be marked at the seven yard line. Should be. his first touchdown of the game. A seven yard run for Dylan Abel with 6.09 left to go in the third quarter. And that makes it 32 to 19 in favor of Torrance. Seven yard run by Dylan Abel. We talked about not having called his name much tonight. And they say, well, okay, if you want to see Dylan, tell you what, when we start the second half, we'll let you get a good look at it. Davila in to tack on the extra points. Magano, who started out the season as a tight end, now the holder, as this one is up and in. Or up and through, up and in. I'm thinking about the hardwood. <laughs> Saw some of the Lawndale basketball players here tonight. And they can't wait to get back into the gym and on Channel 22. Not too early to start talking about it, quite frankly, when you know you're going to be, and we, we don't say it. We just say it because it's reality. There won't be any playoff runs 
here for Channel 20 on the football side for Channel 22 this year. So that's what we've got to look forward to. Obviously, season still has, I think you mentioned, one more, two more games left in the season for most teams. Actually, just one more. Yep. This one and one more. So this one took about five minutes and 50 seconds. 10 play drive, and this was the longest drive of the night, Rufus, a 91 yard drive. And this one is kicked to the far side. Michael Watkins picks it up, seeing if he can find some blockers, but he runs into Russell Hoffman, six feet, 184 pounds of him. And that'll be it. That'll be it, that's for sure. Here, here's the deal, Luke. After, after Lawndale took the lead, at 1914, and as soon as the replay there, you're going to see Michael Watkins eventually being brought down by the special teams play of Torrance, the Tigers. After they took the lead with 439 left in the second quarter of 19 to 14, they've now been outscored 21 0. Watkins gets the call, trying to go around the end as it was first and 10 from the 31. Call it a four yard gain up to the 35. So it'll be second down and six. side on a different formation Kalen Henderson keeping the ball but hanging on to his leg for dear life was Russell Hoffman and that's a no gainer Here you see Henderson going back through and helping wrap him up was Dario Lozano we've called his name quite a few names tonight so it'll be third down and six. See if the Cardinals can keep this going. Wow, coming out wide right for the Cardinals. Number eight, Chase Van Gerwen. Of course, he got a touchdown pass earlier. Here comes Brian Villa. He's got a first down and more. And a touchdown saving, possibly tackle by Michael Hoffman. But getting into Torrance territory with a huge run is Brian Villa. Well, a miss block by Van Gurren. He hates to point out the mistakes that these young men make because they all try so hard. But boy, he had no idea that Villa was coming behind him. Had he known that, he could have thrown the block that would have sprung Villa for the touchdown. tough yardage, gaining about five yards. Down to the 36. So it'll be second down and five. As you mentioned on this play, the tough yardage for Villa as he goes straight up the middle. with 41 yards earlier to get the first down. Now it gets five more yards. It'll be second down. Man in motion is Watkins, but they'll keep it to Henderson as he fakes the handoff to Villa, and he bounces across the first down marker at the 30-yard line, and this one should be a first down at the 29-yard line. Well, Lonjell starting to get some offensive momentum, boy, after being quiet for most of the second quarter, and here, this is their only possession thus far in the third. After Torrance came out the locker room and kept the ball for half of the quarter. So a long drive, a 90 
96 yard, 91 yard drive. But a nice first down run by Henderson and the Cardinals trying to put something together. Brian Villa, actually this is Michael Watkins on the misdirection, he turns the corner and he gets inside the 10 yard line. Taylor Tyrone with a touchdown saving grab. And this one is inside the 10 yard line. It's first and goal for the Cardinals. Taylor Tyrone said, what else have I got to do? Sell tickets, run the popcorn machine. I've scored three touchdowns and now you force me to have to be the guy to bring down your speediest runner. 19 yards and a first down for the slippery Michael Watkins. He'll get the ball again. Spins out of a tackle, gets inside the 10 yard line. That could have been a loss, Rufus. Could have been good move by Michael Watkins on that. And guess who he faked out? <laughs> Mr. Tyrone. Let's watch it on the replay. Whoop! <laughs> <laughs> How'd he do that? That was a nice move. Nice spin move. Yeah. So the ball goes back, actually goes up to the seven yard line, so a two yard gain for Michael. Should be fresh, didn't have that many carries. Just had five carries in the first half. Second and goal, Brian Villa, nope, it is number nine, Flowers, with it on the misdirection handoff on the double wing formation, and that goes just inside the five yard line. So very deceptive, Lou, in terms of it takes us a moment to find out where the ball is. You got to give defenders, no matter who the team is, um, tonight it's Torrance, a lot of credit for, for maintaining your focus and concentration. Well, both teams see it in practice, that's for sure. Under a minute left to go in the first half. Big third and goal play as getting the ball. Is that Henderson keeping? That's keeping, but he's going to be about a yard short. The nose is just barely off of the goal line, so it'll be fourth and one. Here's the replay, Rufus. Okay, so watch the replay there. Henson just calls his own number, takes it up inside, gets awfully close. Boy, Foxfield running tw about 20 seconds left here in the third quarter, a quick third quarter. Eric Gray Jr. splits out wide to the right. All right, check that left. This is going to be a quarterback keeper all the way, I would imagine. Nope, they give it to Michael Watkins, and he bangs his way into the end zone, and that breaks the Tardar string. Touchdown with about 1.7 seconds left to go in the third quarter. Makes it a 10-point ball game, 35 to 25. Actually, that was Brian Villa. Pardon me. Yeah. So a fourth and one touchdown run, four yards for Brian Villa. Brian Aguilar trying to tack on the extra points out of the hold of Villa. This one is pretty. Yeah. Let's go down to Rashawn. Eerily similar, but in fact, they're different. Londell runs the wing T, while Torrance's version of the offense is the double wing. And really what makes them different and what sets them apart is with Londell, theirs is more wide open. They like to get around the edges and get outside, whereas Torrance's offense is more of a smash mouth type of offense. They want to bust it up the gut and get through the middle. And Coach Guilfoyle's words, three yards and a cloud of dust. No matter what offense it is, both of them very capable of lighting up the scoreboards, which they're doing tonight. I'd rather have it four yards in the cloud right. of dust. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. What old Woody Hayes used to say. But we'll take it. We'll take it, and we got ourselves a ball game again, fans. Let's see. And wow. still running with the ball is the man with it. That's Kyle Matthews, and he's hit by... Michael Watkins and then Deron Frost also chase Van Gerwen, but the Tartars will be in business when we come back. Let's take a quick timeout on Channel 22.
So wow, talk about your short fields. It'll be a 35 yard field for the Tartars, courtesy of a beautiful run back by Kyle Matthews. After the two yard run by Brian Villa to make it 35 to 26, completing a 10 play drive, 69 yards, five minutes and 38 seconds worth. Tyrone with that wide pitch, waiting for blockers, has him. There he goes, somehow got through Tyrone inside the 10 yard line. He is a ball in a china closet tonight, down to the six. Indeed, he is having a career night tonight, Lou. The previous night, and we'll get that for you coming into the season. Being seven games that they had played already, averaging about 60 yards a game, actually just a little over 50 a game. Well, he's tripled that. Oh, easy. Pitch back goes to Tyrone, trying to catch up with him is Brian V. It's a foot race to the corner of the end zone, and Taylor Tyrone wins it. Actually, they throw us a curve, Lou. That was number 35. Oh, that's Abel. Abel. Told you they, they said. They say, Lou, you want to see Dylan A. Bell? Okay. Oh, you said that. <laughs> Don't blame that on me. And he's a big old horse, boy. He is six foot, 190 pound senior. He's going to be playing Saturday somewhere. Yeah, let's see. That's that's his second touchdown of the night. How many yards you give him on that? That was a big old six yard run. And that took all of 36 seconds. And that is good, so that makes the score 42 to 26. And time is not the ally of the Cardinals. So a 35 yard drive. Three plays, took 36 seconds. Cardinals pull within nine and give it right back on the next possession. Of course, as you mentioned, aided in large part by the excellent kickoff return. Kyle Matthews, who's a defensive back tight end, is six foot, 168 pound senior. tackles so Taylor Tyrone had 143 yards in the first half 11 17 18 and 47 yards here so far in the second half so he's over two, close to 200 yards. Ortega with the catch. And gets somewhere near the 30 yard line. The flag comes out on the play from the head linesman. So it'll be interesting to see what that call is. Normally from that position, you're gonna see a block in the back by the return team. And that's what the call is. So Tyrone with 190 yards by my unofficial count on the night, just on the ground. And then he has that 23 yard reception. This is, right now they're moving toward erasing some of the disappointment of last week's homecoming loss, which as we noted at the top of the broadcast was against Centennial, 35-33 ball game. And they marked the ball at the 16, Rufus. So yeah, a lot of mascara has been run between these two teams on homecoming night. Back to pass is Henderson, and that ball was knocked down by Abel, and he was looking for an interception. That ball was dropped by Abel. He wasn't trying to knock it down. It got through his hands, man. He had he had pick six on that one all the way. 
<laughs> yep. Intended receiver looked like it was Bonuelos. So now it's second and ten for the Cardinals. Michael Watkins was the man in motion. Henderson keeps the ball. Ran into somebody at the line of scrimmage. And gets to the 19, so a three yard gain. So it'll be third down and seven for the Cardinals with 10.50 left to play. Walking around with a cramp is Brian Villa. And he's on the sidelines right now. Now we have another banged up Cardinal again down to the ground. That's Mike Rodriguez. That's his second time on the ground. And it's going to be fourth down. Ball is at the 22 yard line after that carry. Maybe if we can see the replay again, maybe we can see what happened to Rodriguez. They see some of the training staff, John Guilfoy hopping out there. As the ball was given right up the middle, Rodriguez. Really can't see there, he's, he's doing battle. Maybe twisted his ankle there with big old number 79. That's Dario Lozano. That's what it would look like if we, one more time if we can, Eric, I know it's right at the end where it happens where it falls out of your picture shot. And it does look like he's wearing a brace on one of his knees. You see him on the right yeah. side there doing battle with Lozano. It looks almost as if they maybe got stepped on by Lozano. Maybe, he's a big guy. <laughs> Well, it's his uh, right leg, and that's heavily taped. It may have re-injured that. You know, that's that may have been what he injured in the first half. So let's hope he's okay. And these Cardinals can't afford any more injuries. No, oh, they've 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 had more than their fair share over the course of this season. So it's fourth down and five. Brian Aguilar coming on for his first punts of the evening. You see him being helped off by Brandon Lee and the coaching staff or the training staff. Brandon Lee also out. As I believe he's got a concussion. So the clock is rolling. Aguilar will punt the ball away. Taylor Tyrone, the BMOC, is at the 50-yard line, but a timeout is signaled. Don't know who asked for it. The Cardinals asked for it because they couldn't get their right unit on the field, and they were about to get a penalty for either delay, for any of several things, delay a game, substitution violation. So they instead take the time out here with 9.51 left. They're trailing by 16 at 42 to 26. There you see the hoof of Mike Rodriguez, the 5'8", 190-pound sophomore as the training staff is filling up a bag of ice to wrap around it. And I would imagine that Mr. Rodriguez's night is over. I'm sure Rashawn will have an update for us coming up pretty quick after the punt. Taylor Tyrone back just inside of his own territory at about the 45-yard line. And this time, Londia almost forced it to a punt. Not a good looking kick at all. 19 Boy, yards. Get, got a decent roll out of it though. Now let's go down to Rashawn. Yeah, thanks a lot guys. Lou, you hit it 
hit the nail right on the head. Mike Rodriguez behind me. Earlier in the first half, it was that same right ankle. Someone fell on his ankle in the first half. They retaped it heavily. This time, he twisted the ankle. They're going to take the tape off. He's going to ice it, guys. He's probably done for the night. All right, thanks, Rashawn. So first and 10 after the 20-yard punt by Brian Aguilar. And good play by the defense. Look out, everybody's down there. Everybody wants a piece of Dylan Abel. Looks like that was George Team of 54. Well, actually, it was Caitlin Henderson that made the initial contact. So after two straight touchdowns, a minus three for Dylan. So he's mortal after all. Double wing formation. Taylor Tyrone gets the handoff going around the right side. Nope, it was a misdirection play or did Tyrone hand the ball off again? Well, here's what we know for sure. There was a handoff. <laughs> Quack ho, gets right. back to the line of scrimmage. With a three yard gain. First time we've called his number in a while. And the challenge for us fans, just so you know, I mean, when the quarterback tucks that ball away, it actually is quite difficult from our vantage point, and certainly from the one of the fans up here in the stands to see exactly where, where the ball is. But fortunately, the guys down on the field know what's happening. Now Abel has it, picks wow. through, and now with a long run, he's going to hit the end zone for a touchdown. A 42-yard run, and uh, that's with 8.06 left to go, and another Cardinal down. That's Raymond Alvarado, who's been banged up for the past three weeks or so. And let's watch a nice blocking scheme and a run by Dylan Abel. Really does a good job protecting the ball, too. Does a good job, does the fundamentals. That is, you switch the ball to your outside hand. That was just bad tackling there that time by the Cardinal defense. In fact, there was no tackling which makes it real bad. So 8.09 left to go in the ball game. So that took about a minute. Yep. Three plays on another short field. And 42 yards. And the extra point by Byron Davila goes up and through. And Mr. Davila has been perfect tonight. It is 49 to 26. 8 or 8.09 left to go. We're going to have to get up there with the uh, with the big ladder and change some of those light bulbs up there, Rufus. <laughs> I got the top last time. It's your turn All to get right. up on the top. And, boy, you know, Dylan Abel, almost as if though he was shot out of a cannon here, he scored two touchdowns here in the three touchdowns here in the second half. Yeah, he's got a hat trick himself. Trying to catch up to his buddy. Yeah, he's got... He's got four on the night. So Davila kicking the ball to either Michael Watkins on the near side or Kevin Ortega on the right. And they were definitely offside. Byron Davila had to stutter step. May, might have lost counts of his steps there and somebody ran ahead of him and offside is Torrance. Now let's talk about what's next for the Cardinals. Room. They see Michael Watkins. They will host next Friday night. And while we have the opportunity, next Friday night, of course, being the day after Veterans Day, next Thursday, November 11th. And want to thank everybody for donning a uniform for Absolutely. the red, white, and blue. Absolutely. Cardinals will close out the season against Compton Centennial here at home. 
Ortega gets the ball and he comes up to about the 30 yard line and gets up to about the 35. And let's go to Brian Taylor. Well guys, uh, thanks for tuning in. I want to just make a quick point. I talked to Coach Hollis before the game. He said, big thing for us this week, a big goal is special teams, making those special, those extra points rather, and of course, uh, getting good uh, punt returns and also getting uh, good punts, good distance on our punts. I'm gonna point up to the scoreboard here in a minute. You can see it's 49 to 26. Uh, safely in the lead, it seems Torrance is, but the big thing is, of course, they've not missed one extra point. That's the thing that got them last week in that heartbreaking loss to Centennial. All right, Henderson back to pass, has a man downfield open. Eric Gray Jr. just out of his reach at the 25-yard line, and he got through and by Kyle Matthews in double coverage. Great throw, great effort by Eric Gray Jr. Just a little beyond his reach on that play. And boy, I tell you what, if uh, the Cardinals had some some in routes, some skinny posts, some over the middle things. Maybe they could get some, get a little passing game going. Instead of stepping back three and flanking it. And, and, and say a rosary. It'll be second down and 10 for the Cardinals with 7.50 left to go. Henderson again on the timing pattern, and this is way over the head of his intended receiver, Brandon Martins. So it'll be third and 10. And of course, they're going to pass the game and try to move the ball and pick up yardage very quickly. Again, when it's not a staple of the offense, I'm not quite sure how much they practice it during the course of the week. And as you can see from, from what, we, as you, what we see, I should say, is that clearly it's not something that Henderson is most comfortable with. See if they'll put it up in the air again. Or try to go to a running play. Ball goes to Flowers. Flowers gets a block from Watkins, but he's going to come up about two yards short. So it'll be fourth and two or maybe three. And a timeout on the field. There's a flag over on the far side that we didn't see. So we'll take a look at that one. as well, Rufus. No flag. Just fell out of somebody's pocket. Okay. So now a decision time for John Guilfoyle and the Cardinals. Fourth down, and we're going to call it about three. Or a long two. Well, the point is that they're in a position now where they have no choice but to go for it. And that's exactly what they're going to do. Almost four yards, and they give it to Raymond Alvarado. Gets that and then some. And Raymond was running like he was getting ready to hit something, but nothing right. was there. And Alfredo Gonzalez got in his way, but not before Raymond gets a first down inside of Tartar territory at the 45-yard line. Good run by Raymond Alvarado. Great blocking up front. Absolutely. Alvarado coming in. Coming into the game with 59 carries for 258 yards on the season. 13 yard gain, the ball gets handed off to Alvarado again. So Lawndale has been playing a decent game tonight, Rufus, but a fourth down play, fourth and long was not a good decision. Well, the, the, one, the one at the end of the first half there certainly wasn't. And then what happened was they had to come out of the locker room, kick the ball to him again. So just in that exchange, that was 14 consecutive points there on, on two straight possessions. But as I heard one fan note that Torrance, if I'm not mistaken, has scored on every possession tonight. They have not given the ball up. They have not turned it over as Raymond Alvarado on second seven gets good yardage again across the 40 yard line. They don't fumble the ball when they do the running play. As a matter of fact, I think they've only fumbled the ball three times all season and they're a running team. And they 
haven't punted the ball, that's for sure. Exactly. And, 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 and that's what it's about. We see that from, um, from the various teams we cover throughout the course of this season, what a difference turnovers make. You're, we're talking about it. Henderson on third down throws the short one on a screen, a receiver screen to Ortega. And it gets across the 35 yard line where they needed to go for the first down. And that could be good enough for the first down, but uh oh. Man down, that's Banuelos. Carlos Banuelos. Let's watch the screen develop on the replay. And that is a first down, Rufus. That's they good. did, did have some, that's the first time we've seen that. Right. And it may be a case new of a little too little too late. One of the things about it, I mean, th that that throwing some passes does is that it forces, the, it opens up the defense because they got to play you both ways. Why not start the game with that? I know that running is your strength, but at least give them something to think about. As Kalen Henderson fooling everybody, I thought Raymond Alvarado had it. I thought Brian Villa had it, but nope. That's Kalen Henderson all the way down to the 20 yard line and another first down. Another first down. But here's the problem. There are five minutes left in the contest and you're down by 23 points. Do you think that Torch defense is that bad that they're going to give up 23 points in five minutes? They certainly haven't shown that. And the Cardinals have also shown that they like to hang on to the ball. Back to pass, rolls out, throws to the sideline. And that's an incomplete pass to Banuelos. So it'll be second and 10 from the 20 yard line. Showing the replay here, Henderson rolling right, gets a good look. Just Had his man hit. open. There's also a tartar coming into to his face there. So Henderson showing a new look. 4.29 left to go. Ball is handed off to Flowers on the left end. Flowers gets down to the 10, hangs onto the ball inside the 10 yard line, and that could be good enough for a first and goal. It's going to be awfully close. If, well, for, it is a first and goal. That's the indication from Ken Smotris, the referee tonight. So an 11 yard run for Flowers, his fourth run of the ball game. He spotted at the nine yard line, so goal to go from the nine. Watkins in motion. Henderson right up the middle. Touchdown, Cardinals. That was quick. That was. Good measure. At least a good confidence builder for the Londell Cardinals as they score at the 4 9 mark. A drive that took four minutes. Attacking on the extra point at 49 to 32. Out of the hold of Brian Villa. Looks good. It is. With 4.05 left to go in the ball game, it is 49 to 33. In favor of Torrance. And again, time is not the ally, and nice blocking up front by the left guard in the center for Londale to blow the hole open as you see Brian Aguilar who tacked on the extra point. So a nine play drive that took four minutes, like you said, Rufus. Now, now you can comfortably predict as well that Lawndale will onside kick this.
Nine plays, 65 yards. PAT was good. And there's the onside kick, and the good hands team is up front. Jonathan Hurd picks it up for Torrance. So it'll be first and 10, and terrific field position again for the Tartars. So the Cardinal defense is going to have to toughen up with four minutes left. Well, you, you'd ask for a turnover earlier, and that definitely is what they need now. And here's the problem that happens with that. That means guys start going for strips instead of tackles, okay? And that's going to create its own problem for you, boy, and that can make you vulnerable to getting scored on real quick. So if you're the Cardinals, again, while, while you're going for that, you got to stay with the fundamentals. Henderson with his second touch, or check that third touchdown of the night. And we have a new quarterback in. Kwok Ho gets through everybody, and there goes Kwok right through and into the end zone for a touchdown. Wow. And that's a 53-yard touchdown run for Kwok Ho. At the 350 mark, so. That makes it 55 to 33, Rufus. And look at the blocking up front. That is, and you're right. No, no, no one getting there. So, they're running back crew. Everybody getting a little, a, a little piece of, little piece of the action tonight, Lou. So a 53-yard dash by Kwok Ho. Davila's kick is high, true, and through. 3.50 left to go in this one. It's 56 to 33 in favor of the Torrance Tartars. Let's go down to Rashawn. Thanks, Lou. You know, it's not often that other coaches discuss other teams besides theirs if they're not on their schedule. And here's the thing. This Lawndale coaching staff spends time talking about the Servite Friars. Servite's not on Lawndale's schedule, but the thing is, Servite, like this Lawndale team, is small in numbers. If you look on the Max Preps roster, Servite lists just 22 players on their roster. Now, this is a school with plenty of tradition, plenty of history, and oh, by the way, they're the defending Pac-5 and Division II State Bowl champs. What Coach Guilfoyle says is, what he and his coaching staff try to do is aspire to build something just like they have there. Well, not going so far so good here tonight, but it's a building process and a lot of young talent here on this sideline, guys. Thank you very much, Rashawn. As a Servite can do recruiting, right? unlike Lawndale. 22 guys, what do they got, clones over there? I've seen them on television, they're pretty tough. Now, they've got a good team, and we'll talk about that in a moment, though, because there's, I think, as, as Rashawn has pointed out, they had to rebuild their program themselves. Yep, they sure did. They had a long dry spell for many, many years. And, and, and I know that all too well because there was a coaching situation between LaSalle High and, and their coach and Servite and so forth. But the point was, you rebuild, you start somewhere and this is where they're starting. You know, it's not an overnight process. Coach Guilfoyle and, and his coaching staff will have to take a longer view in terms of what it takes, but you made the key point, which obviously for all public school coaches is, 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 is a crawl in your skin, that the private schools, and not just Servite, but all of them, have the opportunity to recruit players. Now we have a new quarterback for the Cardinals, number 12, Anthony Chapman, a sophomore. And a fumble on the play that's recovered by Torrance. Wow. And number three, a new running back, okay. Gary Hill, dropped yeah. the ball. Put it on the ground, so. And looked like maybe Dario Lozano recovered it. So it's at the 28-yard line now of Torrance with 332 left in the ball game. And Jacob Kalama did look like he was the quarterback on the last touchdown play, but it happened so fast, I don't know. <laughs> Let's see who leads him out into the under center. Does look like Kalama. 
And he pitches it back and does the lead blocking. And that one comes loose, and Londale should have it. Jonathan Hurd coughed it up. Londale says they have it. And they do. That looks like number 15, Brandon Martins. You see that again. That's what I talked about earlier. That ball getting punched out of there. Hits the ground, and a couple of Cardinals in on the play. Looks like Adonis Johnson, the guy with the recovery. Well, he's the guy who knocked it out, that's for sure. So 323, some uh, Keystone Cops action. Stays at the 28-yard line. Yeah, actually looks more like the 30-yard line to me. But what do I know? All right, now you got a timeout being taken by well, Actually, Torres. it's the 26-yard line. That is the time of the game when your scorecard looks really messy. Looks really messy. It's also the time of the game where everybody essentially wants to get it over, not uh, because the one thing you're concerned about, even though they've now both teams are liberally substituting, as they say. <laughs> Lots uh, of fresh looking jerseys out there. At least for the Tartars. And and a couple and a couple of uh Lawndale fresh jerseys out there as well. I mean, they're giving some guys um, a chance and an opportunity. As you say, one of the things that Lawndale has done is that they've switched quarterbacks, and that's, that is Chapman, the 5'7 sophomore. And on the misdirect, getting the ball there was Brian Aguilar getting his first carry that we've seen. It was a nice, nice run for Brian. And he's only had a few on the season. He's had eight on the season for a total of 32 yards. So, got five yards on that carry to the 31. Chat hands the ball off to Aguilar, and all those fresh, clean jerseys migrate to the ball. About a three yard gain for Brian, where it'll be about third down and about three yards to go. It's a lot of fun, Lou, when you're out there with, when you're one of the guys that don't get a lot of play in time because you go through the reps all week. Normally you're running scout team, you're playing against the starters. I mean, you're taking the licks. I mean, can you imagine having to tackle Abel and Tyrone Davis in practice? How about that run by Chapman? Anthony gets to the 45-yard line and a first down. Two minutes left to go, though. That's an 11-yard gain and a first down. Cardinals have about a dozen first downs tonight. Just the Tartars were that much better. They were that much better, Lou. The Cardinals started out strong tonight. But boy, you talk about fade. Chapman gets away, and a nice catch by Brian Aguilar. Gets a block, and down to the 30-yard line. If it wasn't for a nice tackle by Vincent Juarez, Aguilar might have tacked on a touchdown. He might have, one, and Chapman did that under pressure from big number 70. As you see, giving pursuit. Let's see if we've got him. And again, another another guy that we don't have in the program, as explained earlier, normally meaning that they're JV players that are brought up on Fridays to play with the varsity. So 25 yard first down, and we have the emergency crews coming on. And Chapman again, nice spiral, big catch in this near corner by Brandon Martins. He goes into the end zone. Is he in for a touchdown? Yes, he is. Touchdown, Brandon Martin. 30-yard touchdown pass by Chapman. That was a nice-looking pass. It was. And the first guy to congratulate Chapman was Kalen Henderson. <laughs> That was nicely done. 
So Chapman, 30 yards to Martins. And he'll be, we'll be seeing him on the hardwood real soon. But right now, Brian Aguilar getting ready to tack on the extra points. And he was a big play on this drive and dots the I and crosses the T. So that makes it 56 to 40. Wow. Boy, we went to a football game when a basketball game broke out. <laughs> well, basketball player scored the touchdown. Five plays. Made that pretty quick work, Rufus. No, we so don't. I guess Coach Guilfoyle said, well, if we're going to pass it, we might as well put the cat in, cat in who can throw it. You may as well. I, I think, of course, with only one game left in the season, Coach Guilfoyle is seeing something that maybe will give him and his coaching staff reason to rethink their offensive strategy or look at different ways to tweak it and expand it, perhaps going, if not into the next game, into the next season. Five plays, 74 yards, 30-yard touchdown pass, Chapman to Martins. The extra point was good. And we have a 16-point ball game. Don't know if this is gonna be enough time for the Cardinals to come back. <laughs> We've seen Stranger. We've seen Stranger, but this would be the strangest. That'd be right up there. Onside kick, and that goes perfectly into the breadbasket of Jacob Kamala. So it'll be first and 10 at the 45 yard line. Seems that the Tartars could build a, their house right there. That's where they've been starting off exactly. all night long. With 54 seconds left to go in this one. After two fumbles. Okay, there actually was, looks like it may, can't tell who that is. You know, we were wondering, we certainly didn't see a player that was injured. Is that a person? It's a person down there we can't see clearly from from from, from this angle. No, we're talking is. about oh. the emergency crews that are on the scene off to the left of your screen. But uh, Kamala takes a knee. Gonna take one more. Actually back in is Magana took the knee. And he'll take another one and that will pretty much do it except for the clock counting down 20 more ticks and the Cardinals will go down to the Torrance High Tartars 56 to 40 and the Tartars improve to two and six overall win their first game of the Pioneer League and Lawndale falls to one and eight as the final horn sounds and 0-4 and in the Pioneer League and holding up the league. They have the strongest back in the league. Absolutely. Well, hey, what, what can I say? We had a couple good looks this season at the Cardinals. They put on a show. You know, this is the type of game, you know, for, for the mom or dad who wasn't able to make the game, and moms and dads are almost always there, but for the one who wasn't able, took it on Junior, how'd you do? Why well, we score 40 points? That's great! <laughs> That's great! Well, well, there's a little bit more to the story. Yep. We gave up 56. <laughs> okay, let's go to Brian. Well, when he's ready, Brian Robert Thomas Taylor has Rock Hollis with him. And we're ready to go anytime they are. And let's go down to Brian. Okay, I'm over with Coach uh, Hollis. Big win tonight uh, for Torrance uh, after last week's tough loss to uh, Centennial. What are your thoughts, Coach? Uh, you're real happy with the way things went, obviously, tonight? Well, when we run the ball, 
and the way we run the ball the way we did and block the way we did, I'm very happy. Um, it's always difficult. It's a track meet when you play Lawndale. And uh, defensively, it's very difficult to stop them. So we had to score, and we did a good job of that tonight. So my earlier comments on my sideline, you know, I was noting that you didn't miss one extra point. That was different from last week. Special teams, huh? Special teams, that's why they call them special. You know, you only have 30 of them, about maybe 15 or 20 of those a game. And if you, if you do the right things on every one, you can win. So. I know you're anxious to get back with your team. Looking forward to next week. What are your thoughts? What's going to happen? Well, we play North, and it's always a big rivalry game. And, uh, you know, if we uh, we have to stop their run, but, uh, you know, hopefully we'll be able to score a little bit. Absolutely. Thanks so much, Coach, for your time. Good luck with uh, your, your, the rest of your season. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks. All right. Thanks, guys. Okay. I guess that's back to us, huh? All right. Uh, and Rufus, it was too much Tyrone Taylor in, or Taylor Tyrone in the first half, and then too much Dylan Abel in the second half for the uh, Torrance Tartars. Well, trust it's, me, he had them all on. turned around. Tyrone Taylor, Taylor Tyrone. Didn't Either matter, way. number 15 <laughs> and saw, number 35. They saw teams coming and going. <laughs> yeah. And you're, but you're right, sorry, but between, between him, I mean, one, he was just a load, and then when you look at they unleashed Dylan Abel in the second half, and he scores three touchdowns. So Taylor Tyrone with four of his own, three running, one receiving. Dylan Abel with three, all of them scored on the ground, and with the exception of, I believe, the last possession, which was played by uh, uh, reserves on the team. The, uh, the Torrance Tartars scored on virtually every possession of theirs. The Lawndale crowd leaves a little bit disappointed. As we said, this was a situation where they thought they had a great opportunity for a win. And normally, as we said, when you put 40 points up, you do walk away with a W. However, that's not the case tonight here at Lawndale High as the better team was the Torrance Tartars tonight. That's right, and Taylor Tyrone's night, 15 carries, 190 yards for three touchdowns on the ground, two catches for 57 yards, and one touchdown in the air, and that's a total of 227 yards and four touchdowns of total offense for Taylor Tyrone, my pick for tonight's player of the game. I don't know what that, 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 well, bro, that, that's That's the easiest one we'll have all season. <laughs> that's the very easiest one. I mean, we could have made that that award at halftime. Well, yeah, but then, you know, old uh, number 35, Dylan Abel, came on to rush his heart out too in the second half. There must have been some disciplinary issue there because he didn't even get a sniff in the first half. You gotta assume so, considering the way in which he played, that it was, it was definitely a coach's decision not to play him in the first half. Well, he had six carries for 84 yards and three touchdowns. So not a bad second half for Mr. Dylan Abel. Well, I'm uh, doing some stat work right here now, so uh, I'll be able to stand up in just a second as soon as I'm done here, Mr. Director. Also, want to uh, send our best wishes out to Tom Strickfadden. Couldn't make it to the game tonight. Had a little bit of a health issue. But uh, I know that he'll be back real soon and back in the saddle again. And all of our thoughts and wishes are with him as he tries to shake the big C. Tommy, yes, I talked to Tommy this morning. He sounded real good. Said he was a little under the weather. But... And not just the other, but as you said, with and, and he's been very candid about his challenges. Uh, but he sounded in great spirits. I can't tell you that. And just uh, totaling up the stats here for Nagano, the uh, quarterback. Three out of five, 62 yards and a touchdown uh, for Jason Magana, I should say. Not Nagano. That was another player. But Rufus... Uh, Another game where the Cardinals' defense just couldn't hold a team that had a couple of stars, and actually, you know, the uh, uh, the Tartars trying to revenge their loss 
against the one of the better teams around town in Compton Centennial. And uh, the Cardinals just couldn't keep up the after a while. The Cardinals couldn't keep up. You're right. They start. They started out very strong. Scored the opening touchdown of the game on a 43-yard run by Watkins. Uh, gave up a, a, def a touchdown to Torrance. Came back immediately and scored again on a pass to Van Gerwen. And then things started to get a little bit dicey from there. Tacked on a touchdown at the 439 mark on an 11-yard Henderson run. That made it a 19 to 14 game. And after that, boy, the wheels really came off as Torrance then scored on three consecutive possessions before they were able to score again with, a, with, with uh, about two seconds left in the third on a one-yard run by Villa. Uh, and then finally wrapping it up in the fourth quarter, two scores, nine-yard run by Henderson and a 30-yard pass from Mar from uh, Chapman to Martins. So that wrapped up their 40 points. Rayshon is down on the field with head coach John Guilfoyle, so let's go to Rayshon. Hey, thanks, Rufus. I'm here with Coach Guilfoyle. Coach, tonight was a tough one. You guys right from the beginning but we were talking a little bit before the game and there was just those stretches you guys kind of had a stretch near the end of that second quarter what happened uh look, 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 just uh, we needed to play mistake free and we didn't um we had to give the ball back to them and we were having a hard time stopping them not just hard we it was almost impossible but um i don't know we just we needed to keep scoring with them we couldn't keep up tonight so uh, you guys were able to do a couple of things in the passing game here tonight. Does that give you any confidence in moving forward as far as throwing the ball is concerned? Um, yeah, you know, we, we, we throw the passes we know we know we have a chance to make. And uh, we try to set it up with our run plays and, and play action people. And, um, you know, it's just we're, we put running backs at, at quarterback and we try to run the ball. And, hey, sometimes they work and sometimes they don't. Um, as far as our passing game goes, we'll keep doing what we do, and if more plays open up, then we'll throw them. So, what was the discussion when you just met with these guys just now in the huddle after the game? Um, just about the fight that they put up um, defensively in the first half. We, we we weren't very aggressive, and that that was our talk at, the, at halftime about being more aggressive and attacking them, and and we did that. You know, I mean, they still caught us, but we played a lot more aggressive, and the kids responded. And we fought, and we fought till the end. And you, you can't ask any more of your football players than to keep fighting. And I don't, I didn't see any heads bowed, and we just kept, we just kept fighting. And I'm, I'm proud of my kids. So. Yeah, a lot of fans here were admiring the fact that that your guys didn't quit at all. You're going at it right up until the very end. We talked about it a little bit before the game. These guys aren't young anymore. Youth no longer is an excuse. Going forward, one more game left during this season conveying that message to those guys and ending this season on a high note. How do you do that? Um, I, th I think, our, it's, like I said just a minute ago, we're, we're fighters and we're going to go out there next week against Centennial and we're going we're gonna to go fight them. We're going try to try to win a football game. Those kids, those kids aren't quitters. And uh, we'll come out and we'll, we'll have high energy and we'll, we'll play like it's the first game of the season because that's what we've been telling them since we started here. And uh, what happens, happens. I mean, people catch us and and, you know, right now we're not the team that can answer back every single time. But we're working on it. And, and yeah, we were young at the beginning of the season. And we'll just keep improving. And hopefully it'll, it'll carry over to next year. So um, I'm proud of my seniors. They're, they're, the leadership is stepping up on our football team. And I, I think it made a, a difference here tonight. So On the injury front, you expect to have a few guys back? Yeah, we'll, we'll get uh, Brandon, Brandon uh, Lee back next week. And I think that's pretty much it. Uh, Aaron Fowler is still questionable. Hopefully we can get him back next week. Um, it hurts us a little bit not to have him, but Dominic Flowers has stepped in for him and did a pretty good job. He had a couple good runs tonight, so, you know, we're working on him. Dominic's, he's a junior. It's his first year playing varsity football, so, you know, he's, he's, he's got thrown into the fire like a lot of kids. So, um, I don't know. I, I, feel, I feel good about our chances next week, too. So. Hey, thanks a lot, Coach. We appreciate it. That's Coach John Guilfoyle. Next week we'll be against Centennial right here at Cardinal Stadium, guys. A tough one for these Cardinals here tonight. We'll send it right back up to you and me and BRT. We'll give you our sideline wrap-up in a bit. All right, thank you very much, Rashawn Haylock. Good job, and uh, also thanks to Coach Guilfoyle in a tough situation after a tough loss, 56-40. to 40.
to the Torrance Tartars. And, uh, well, you know, it kind of creates a quandary here now because although Kalen Henderson is not that bad of a quarterback, uh, Mr. Chatham, uh, he sure did show Anthony Chatham, the sophomore, uh, just sure did show some poise back there and throwing some nice spirals. And then Kalen Henderson's just a junior, so he's got another year left. And uh, do you open it up a little more? Maybe do get away from the uh, comfortable double wing formation, wing T, or uh, not the double wing like uh, uh, Torrance has, but open it up a little bit more. Well, I was listening very closely to what Coach Guilford was saying. I don't think he's going to open it up at all. <laughs> yeah. he, said, he said we take, you know, what's that? We, we make the passes we think we can make, all right? That means that's not something we come out and do. But he it, it, it did, though, seriously – I, I believe gifts and Rashad asked a very good question, some consideration to it, because we had actually talked about that. Right. And the point is, it's about when it came into play in the game. By the time it came into play, it had very little value. The value is you're not making the defenses do different things. You're not keeping them off balance if you start the game and you play the first half, or you play the first three quarters, and you're essentially running the ball, and maybe you're throwing one pass a half. Boy, mm -hmm. you, if you throw two, woo, you really <laughs> opened it up. Exactly. You know? So that that's where it's going to make a difference. It has to be a part of the beginning of the game and not the end. Kalen Henderson uh, was the leader on offense tonight, 41 carry, 14 carries and 91 yards and a touchdown. And through the air, Rufus was 2 out of 7, 29 yards and a touchdown. And uh, also 90 yards on the ground for Michael Watkins as the Tartar defense really uh, kept him bottled up as he had uh, just a handful of carries, 7 carries only, and 91, 90 yards though, and a touchdown. And over on the other side of the ball for the Torrance Tartars, it was uh, Taylor Tyrone who had 15 carries and 190 yards and three touchdowns on the ground and uh, one touchdown in the air uh, receiving for 227 total yards and four touchdowns. Just way too much for the uh, uh, Lawndale defense to handle. And then his pal, Dylan Abel, six carries and 84 yards and three touchdowns. And uh, that was just in the second half. And I do believe our sideline reporters, Rashawn and Brian, have some final thoughts. Yeah, thanks a lot, Lou. You talked about it a little bit towards the end of the game. There was a cheerleader down just to the left of you guys near that end zone down there, Jada Arnett. Uh, from what we're told down here, she was experiencing excruciating pains in her side and kind of fainted. The ambulance came and uh, they took her away. Of course, our thoughts and prayers are with Jada. Joined now by Brian Robert Taylor. Brian, this one got a little bit ugly for the Cardinals. From your vantage point, though, however, I know the special teams was a big deal for Torrance. Absolutely. You know, we've been, uh, uh, Rashawn and I have been talking about this a lot last week uh, when we're off camera about uh, the, the role that special teams play in high school, which is actually not that big a role compared to, like, college and, 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 and the pro levels. Uh, not to compare it, but in a way you can't help but doing that. Tonight, I pointed out in an earlier sideline thing that, uh, uh, one of my one of my spots that I did was uh, you know the coach big big goal for him coach Hollis at Torrance was they didn't want to miss any extra points uh, they didn't want to have any missteps on special teams and they were able to accomplish that tonight so along with his other comments I think that was a big part of their game plan to to have that happen for them you know yeah absolutely and just talking about that kick in the game I was talking to coach Gomez afterwards not really much emphasis put on it at this level and I think that was a big key after Londell's first three touchdowns tonight they had 19 points. They were already down, although they matched them touchdown for touchdown. Those extra points hurt them kind of, and they kind of fell in a slump after that, and it was kind of hard for them to, to get back from that as Torrance just continued to pile up the points. Absolutely, and like we said, it wouldn't have made that much of a difference in the game tonight, but you know, it all adds up. You know, everything, the devil's in the details, it's no different with football, and I mean, you know, you and I have talked about this. We talked about maybe talking about this in our recap tonight. I mean, what are your thoughts? What do you, what do you see the future for high school football? Do you think there, there's a greater emphasis going to be placed on special teams, on making sure they get those extra, like, field goals? I think they're leaving a lot of points on the table. Why do you think that it hasn't played a bigger role to date, I mean, historically and otherwise? Yeah, I, I, I think when, when you talk about that and we talk about field goal kicking and punting and things at this level, and, Lou, I'm sure, of course, you can attest to this as well, partner, that it's the emphasis. It's just not much put on it kicking special teams aren't necessarily special they aren't necessarily a specialty 
at this level. When you get to the next level, when you get to the NFL, kickers are kickers, punters are punters. But here, the kicker and the punter or the quarterback or sometimes the linebacker, sometimes the wide receiver. So you have to focus on offense and defense, and the special teams aren't as special down here at this level. I think so. And, you know, and I, I think things could change. I mean, I, what I would love to see for the game at the high school level would be for maybe there be a little bit of an evolving of that where they put place more of an emphasis on that you know what i'm saying uh maybe it is such a glory position at this level but you know there's a lot of potential there and there's a lot of potential for scoring that's left on the table that i think games could could be decided differently don't you agree yeah absolutely we'll see we'll see how all this pans out uh moving forward one thing to point out guys from the sideline no Londell did not quit tonight but one thing that i noticed silence i mean not a peep on the Lawndale sideline tonight, guys. They went down and you didn't hear anything. You didn't hear any rah-rah, you didn't hear guys pumping each other up. And I think that right there is just a sign of their youth. Peer on peer leadership is such a tough thing at this level. And in order to be any type of successful team, Rufus, I'm sure you can attest to this one as well, the coach can't be the only one playing bad guys. Some of the players have to step up and get in guys' face and challenge guys. And with such a young team, we're not seeing that from this Lawndale team. Will we see it from Luzinger team next week? We'll see. Luzinger taking on West. That is the next stop and the final stop on our football road trip. 1-7, 0-3 in Bay League heading into tonight get against a West Torrance team. That's 1-7, 0-3 heading into the Bay League tonight. BRT, guess we'll see you at Luzinger. We'll see you at Luzinger next week. Thanks so much, everybody. Have a good night, and thank you, Rashawn. We'll see you guys at Luzinger, Lou Rufus. All right, thank you very much, fellas. Uh, great job, as usual, on the sidelines. And, uh, well, the senior leadership of this uh, team is Brian Villa and Brian Aguilar, uh, also Aaron Fowler, and uh, Raymond Alvarado is the captain of this team. So just a handful of seniors on this Cardinal team. And I want to uh, tell, address something that uh, Brian was talking about. At this level, you're learning the fundamentals of tackle football. And so it's really not emphasized like Rashawn was saying. Plus, the best kickers are usually on the soccer team. So that's why it's kind of like baseball. The best guys either pitch or play shortstop. And in basketball, the best guy usually plays point guard. And here, the best guy usually plays quarterback. And oh yeah, by the way, how's your foot doing? Exactly. It's that, I mean, you're exactly right. And the other part of it is, I think, it, it's those are skill positions. Right. And when you look at schools that actually have players who do that, those those kids go to kicking camps. You know, that's money. Somebody's got to pay that. That right. doesn't come cheap. That's out of mom and dad's pocket. Mm -hmm. So you don't find that off. The same thing with quarterbacks. There's a reason why you find the highly skilled quarterbacks at some of the schools we talk about and lesser skilled quarterbacks at other schools that we that we see more normally. Why? Because there are quarterback camps that somebody has to pay for you to go to to develop skills in those type of skill positions. You know, it was one of the reasons I think the suffers here, along with, as you said, the soccer team. Now, what we've seen is some schools, you say, well, hey, why don't you go ask one of those guys? <laughs> let, let mom don't know. Do I'll tell you what, we, we'll make sure <laughs> nobody gets near him. Okay. Right. We just need a kicker. Busio, for years we saw Losinger struggle with the kicking game. Man, along comes a kid like Busio. Wow, what and a then difference. The one before that. Exactly. Got a scholarship out. You know, and, 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 and those kickers are a fundamental part of your offense and defense. Right. You know, they affect yep. the game both ways. So hopefully better days are ahead. I like Coach Guilfoyle's attitude. I mean, he's always a positive guy, always sees the bright side of things. Sure. You know, and, and we've seen them. You know, take a couple of tough losses this season. But, man, he never never stops smiling, never stops believing in his guys, and never stops looking forward to the next game. And that's what's going to help his team as much as anything, that they've got a leader and their head coach who is an inspirational guy as well as a good coach, and they're doing some good things. That's right. As a teacher, that's for sure. And for Rock Hollis, well, they had seven opportunities to practice their uh, – PATs tonight as they go on to win. To, uh, and they passed on all seven. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. So they get an A as far as that goes. Uh, Byron Davila and crew gets an A on that. So, well, for, partner, what do you think? Well, you, we you got, got a little get, bit of hard work to do. That's right. Who is our player of the game? We know who that is on the Torrance side of the ball. Right. And who is it going to be on the Lawndale side of the ball? I'm, I'm going to pick number four. Okay. I, I was Henderson. I, I was with the – he, he was he was in my two that was there. Okay. Uh, I I will say we'll give him a mention. We'll we'll we'll, we'll honor Kalen Henderson, but also the, I I thought uh, Via 
Ryan Villa picked up some tough yards and was just always in there. He's the senior. Yeah, like he you is. talked about You're the right. senior leadership. I mean, he, he just kept plugging away at it, you know. And he, he does. He's one of those dirty work guys. Exactly. Yeah. So. All right. So Brian Villa is going to be our player of the game. And uh, just going over. Well, now you just took it away from Henderson. I agree with you on Henderson, but I mentioned How about Villa. Are you one of our co-players in the game? Well. Hey, there you go. All right, gentlemen, you Since got it's that? it's a democracy here right. after Red and Blue Day on yeah. Tuesday? There you go. All right, okay. So there you go. We've got the two two separate parties here. we got the coffee and the tea party right. here, right? There Wait, you go. No, no, don't associate <laughs> me with the tea party, please. <laughs> okay. All right, so our co-players of the game, Brian Villa, the senior, and Kalen Henderson. All right, well, now, now we've got to put a bowl. Now it's time. Way. All right. And from Lawndale High School at uh, Cardinal Stadium, I'm Lou Stowers for... Rufus Washington, Rashawn Haylock, and Brian Taylor, and Eric Chavez and the terrific Channel 22 sports crew saying once again, the final score, Torrance 56, Lawndale 40. Until next time, so long.